Hello students, today I am explicating the topic Danhoff's and Contemporary Classification of Entrepreneurs. It has been clearly observed that entrepreneurs can be defined, understood and perceived in different dimensions of entrepreneurial choices. This entrepreneurial choices encompasses the economic, social, cultural, political, legal, demographic, competitive, technological, physical, natural, ecological and all other environmental components. So based on these dimensions and the outcome of entrepreneurial ventures, a typology of entrepreneur is discussed in this lecture today. Classification or types of entrepreneurs. First, let us see how Clarence Danhoff classified entrepreneurs. Based on his study on functional characteristics of successful farmers in American agriculture, he classified entrepreneurs into four types. First one is innovative entrepreneurs. Innovative entrepreneurs are those who innovate new ideas permute and combine new factors of production, discover new markets and reorganize the enterprises. Such entrepreneurs are characterized by aggressive assemblies of information for trying out a noble combination of determinants. Such entrepreneurs can do well when a certain level of development has already been achieved. They look forward for improvement. The second comes imitative or adoptive entrepreneurs. Imitative entrepreneurs are characterized by readiness to adopt successful innovations inaugurated by innovating entrepreneurs. They do not innovate the changes themselves. They only imitate techniques and technologies innovated by others. Such type of entrepreneurs are particularly suitable for underdeveloped regions as adoption sets course on trial and error. The third category of entrepreneur is the Favian entrepreneurs. The Favian entrepreneurs are timid and cautious. They imitate other innovations only if they are certain that failure to do so may damage his business. They are very skeptical in their approach in adopting or innovating new technology in their enterprise. They are not adaptable to the changing environment, but they love to remain in existing business with as old technique of production. They change only when there is an imminent threat to the very existence of their enterprise. The fourth is the drawn entrepreneurs. These entrepreneurs are characterized by a die-hard conservation and may even be prepared to suffer the loss of business. They never like to get rid of their traditional business and traditional machinery or systems of the business. They always feel comfortable with their old-fashioned technology of production, even though the environment as well as the society have undergone considerable changes. Thus, this entrepreneur, that is the drone entrepreneurs, refuse to adopt the change. They are laggards as they continue to operate in their traditional way and resist change. This entrepreneurial activity may be restricted to just one or two innovations. 
Next is Mr. Arthur High School's classification. Mr. Arthur High School classifies entrepreneurs into three types. The first one is empirical entrepreneur. He is an entrepreneur who hardly introduces anything revolutionary and follows the principle of rule of thumb in running his or her business or enterprise. Second one is rational entrepreneur. Such entrepreneurs are well informed about the general economic conditions and introduce changes which look more revolutionary in the burgeoning business competition. The last one, that is the third one, is cognitive entrepreneur. Cognitive entrepreneurs draw upon the advice and services of experts and introduces changes that reflect complete break from the existing scheme of enterprise. Now, let us move on to the next classification. On the basis of ownership, entrepreneurs can be classified into two types. Here, the first one is private entrepreneur. Such entrepreneur is motivated by profit and they do not enter those sectors of the economy in which prospects of monetary rewards are never bright. The second one is public entrepreneur. Public entrepreneurs are not much motivated by profit. They generally prevail in the underdeveloped countries where government takes the initiative to share enterprises. Next is classification based on the scale of enterprise. Entrepreneur is categorized into two types, namely the small scale entrepreneur and the large scale entrepreneur. The small scale entrepreneur. This classification is especially popular in underdeveloped countries. Small scale entrepreneurs do not possess the necessary talents and resources to initiate large scale production and introduce revolutionary technological changes. Second one is large scale entrepreneurs. In the developed countries, most entrepreneurs deal with large scale enterprises. Large scale entre entrepreneurs possess the financial and necessary enterprise to initiate and introduce new technical changes. This entrepreneur works hard to sustain and develop a high level of technical progress. Next classification of entrepreneur is based on developmental angle. Entrepreneurs can be envisioned into five types under this. First is the prime mover. This entrepreneur sets in motion a powerful sequence of development, expansion and diversification of business. Second is the manager. Such an entrepreneur does not initiate expansion and is content by just staying in business. Now, the third one is minor innovator. This entrepreneur contributes to economic progress by finding better use for existing resources. Now, the fourth entrepreneur is the satellite. This entrepreneur assumes a supplier's role and slowly moves towards a productive enterprise. And the last one is the local training. Such an entrepreneur limits his enterprise to the local market only. Subsequently, based on types of entrepreneurial business, entrepreneurs are classified into four types. First one is manufacturing entrepreneur. This entrepreneur runs such a business which actually produces the products that can be sold using resources and supplies. For example, apparel and other textile products. 
chemical and related products, electronics and other electrical equipments, agricultural tools and implements, etc. Second is wholesaling entrepreneur. Such entrepreneur owns a business which sells products to the middlemen. The third one is retailing entrepreneur. This entrepreneur runs such a business which sells products directly to the people who use or consume them. The fourth one is service entrepreneur. Such entrepreneur runs the business in selling services rather than products. Now, based on the personality, entrepreneurs can be classified into nine types. First one is the improver. This entrepreneur operates his or her business predominantly in the improver mode, focuses on using his or her company as a means to improve the world. The improvers have an unwavering ability to run their business with high integrity and ethics. For example, Anita Rodhik, founder of Bevishoff. The second type is the advisor. This entrepreneur provides an extremely high level of assistance and advice to the customer. The advisor can become totally focused on the needs of the business and customer that they may ignore their own needs and ultimately burn out. For example, John W. Nordstrom, founder of Nordstrom. The third type is the superstar. This entrepreneur undertakes business on charisma and high energy as a superstar. This personality often builds the business around own personal brand. Superstars can be too competitive and workaholics. For example, Donald Trump, the chief executive officer of Trump Hotel and Casino Resorts. The fourth type is the artist. This entrepreneur is greatly creative and highly reserved. An artist tend to build his or her own business around the unique talents and creativities that he or she possesses. For example, Scott Adams, creator of Dilbert the fifth is the visionary. This entrepreneur has a high degree of curiosity to understand the world around him or her and sets plan to avoid the hurdles. Visionaries focus too much on the dream with little focus on reality. For example, Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft. The sixth type is the analyst. Such entrepreneurs focus on fixing problems in a systematic way and they excel at problem solving. For example, Intel founder Gordon Moore. The seventh type of entrepreneur is the fireball. This type of entrepreneurs own an operate enterprise business with full of life. The firm is life energizing and max customer feel that the company has a get it done attitude in a fun, playful manner. Margon Forbes, publisher of Forbes magazine, is a good example. The A type is the hero. Such entrepreneur is characterized with the incredible will and ability to lead the world and overcome his or her business through any challenge. The hero possesses the leadership skills to help others find their way. Cite an example, Jack Wells, CEO of General Electric, is a solid example. The ninth type is the healer. This type of entrepreneur provides nurturing and harmony to the enterprise or the business they deal with. They have an uncanny ability to survive and persist with an inner calm.
For example, Ben Cohen, co-founder of Ben and Zeri's Ice Cream. In recent years, some new classifications of entrepreneurs have been met. Let us try to know. First one, the individual entrepreneurs. These entrepreneurs prefer to set up their business individually. They introduce their own capital, intellect and business acumen to run the enterprise successfully. They operate their business mainly in the form of proprietorship type of concern. Such entrepreneurs have the advantages of flexibility, quick decision making and state patronage. But a single individual can establish, operate and control an organization up to a limit. The second type is the institutional entrepreneurs. As an enterprise or business becomes larger, there is the need to acquire a number of new entrepreneurial skills through a corporate body. Thereafter, it becomes necessary to institutionalize entrepreneurship. A group of entrepreneurs have to be developed to handle the increasing complex network of decision making. Such group is known as industrial entrepreneurs. They actively participate in managing the daily routine of the business concern. As such, the businesses or the firms which are managed by this type of entrepreneur become more successful in their operation. The third type of entrepreneur is the inventors. These entrepreneurs primarily involve themselves in research and development activities. They are creative in character and feel happy in inventing new products, technologies and methods of production. The fourth type is the challenges. Entrepreneurs of this type take challenges to establish business venture as mark of achievement. They keep on improving their standard and face boldly the odds and advertisers that come in their way. They use their business acumen and talent to convert the odds into opportunities, thereby making profit. Now, the fifth one is the bias. These entrepreneurs explore opportunities to persist existing units which may be seized or are in running condition. If the units they possess are sick, they turn them around using their experience, expertise and business acumen. By possessing these units, they make themselves free from the hassles of building infrastructures and facilities. The sixth one is the lifetimer. These entrepreneurs believe that business is the part and parcel of their life. They take off the business to reunite successfully as a matter of ego satisfaction. They have a strong desire for taking personal responsibility. Family enterprises which strive due to high personal skills are included under this category. The seventh one is entrepreneur by inheritance. At times, people become entrepreneurs when they inherit the family business. In India, there are large number of family controlled business houses. Firms in these houses are passed from one generation to the another. Now, the eighth type of entrepreneur is the technologist entrepreneurs. With the decline of the joint family business and the rise of the scientific and technical institutions, technically qualified persons have entered the field business. These entrepreneurs may enter business to commercially exploit their inventions and discoveries. Their main asset is technical expertise. 
The ninth type is the force entrepreneurs. Many persons become entrepreneurs on account of the circumstances. The money lenders of yesteryears enter into the business due to the decline of money lending business with the growth of banking and government legislation. So, neo risk Indian returning from abroad, also known as NRIs, and educated unemployed persons seeking self employment may also be described as forced entrepreneurs. Further, entrepreneurs may be classified into first generation and established entrepreneurs, rural and urban entrepreneurs male and female entrepreneurs etc. Now, it is hereby concluded that the emergence and development of types of entrepreneurs has a direct bearing on availability of certain factors which are supportive in nature. These factors include capital, labor, raw materials, markets, legitimacy of entrepreneurship, social mobility, marginality, security, need achievement, etc. Hence, presence and absence of the above factors and dimensions, entrepreneurs can be envisioned into different types and classified as above.